extended as ending number one like a winding sheet. Striking May again, May began to scream and shout. What the hell are you doing to me? You must have lost your damn mind. Hitting me like some old nigger, screamed May as she tried to fight him back. After several swings, May finally managed to connect her punch right smack in his eye. This triggered him, as he wasn't already filled ra with rage. The tingly sensation that was once in his fingertips traveled all throughout his body. Stop hitting me, woman, he yelled angrily, but May continued to punch him. I said, stop hitting me. Now, I done warned you. I cannot believe you hit me, May exclaimed, punching him one more time in the face. The room silenced. May looked at her husband in complete disbelief. But little did she know, the fight was not over. Seconds turned into minutes, and before she knew it, May's husband tackled her with great aggression. He had completely lost it. May's last blow to his face sent him over the edge. Punch after punch after punch after punch. He had managed to knock May out completely, but for some reason he just couldn't stop hitting his helpless wife and eventually blacked out. It wasn't until he heard a loud thump from the apartment next door that he had snapped out of his spell and realized what he had done. May, he shouted as he shook her unconscious body. May, wake up. I'm so sorry, he exclaimed. Shaking May like crazy, he realized that May was not getting up. May, please get up. I'm sorry. I lost full control of my body. I don't know who that was. May, please get up, he shouted nervously. He began to leap. Moving frantically, he grabbed his wife and carried her to the bathroom, where he placed her in the bathtub, where he let the cold water run on her unconscious body. Minutes went by when he realized that May was not re responding. He turned the water off and began to cry uncontrollably. Finally, May awarded, awakened from the sound of her husband weeping. May, is that you? I was afraid I lost you. I'm so sorry, he exclaimed. I'm so, so, so sorry. I had so much anger and aggression built up from work in the coffee shop that I let it get to the rest of me and completely lost control. He cried, begging to May for forgiveness, but it was far too late. May sat in the tub in great disbelief. She thought to herself, did that really just happen? Did he really hit me? Did a small argument really turn into something like this? May got herself together, got out the tub, and looked at him with a blank stare. In a trance, in a complete shock, May headed towards her room. Say something, he said, but May was speechless. Say something, anything, he said, but May once again was speechless. As she reached her room, she gathered some of her belongings and headed towards the front door. He realized she was about to leave and ran up behind her, grabbing her arm. He then realized that was the wrong thing to do. Please, don't go. Let me explain myself. He tried, begging one more time. But May snatched her arm back and shouted, don't you ever touch me again. Don't you put your hands on me no more. As she continued to head out the door, leaving her husband behind. Story ending number two. Lawing and jawing. Other lawyer. But judge, I must have the proper chance to plead my case. Judge, what did I just say? This pretty lady is wanting to get home. And her lawyer has said enough. I'm going to take her her home. I reckon you just wasted my time now. Other lawyer. But judge. Judge. I'm going to cut you off right there. Now I said court's adjourned. I've made my decision and that's that. Now you shut your trap or I'll have you locked up with the rest of them. Other lawyer. 
judge. Please let me parade my material. Judge, are you being disobedient in my court, sir? I have zero tolerance for disobedience in my court. I reckon you want 50 years to life. You keep it up. Other lawyer. Judge, it's only right that I plead my case. It's not fair for me not to be able to say what I have to say. You never know. What if what I have to say makes you change your decision? And what if what I have to say is a good and valid point? Judge, you're really starting to piss me off now, lawyer. Lady, you might as well let that man make his point because I sure as hell won't be letting you take me home. Judge, Excuse me, lady. You heard what I said. You sure won't be taking me home. Judge, that's it. I've had enough of this outspoken comments in my courtroom. Police, lock this lawyer away. He said quite enough today. Quotation marks. Police handcuffs other lawyer and begs the judge not to sentence him to jail. Lady. I'm leaving now. You're quite ridiculous. You have a good day. Judge. Looks around. Where do you think you're going? Little Miss Lady. I didn't say you could leave without me. Lady. Well, Judge, I'm leaving. You didn't let your, um, your lawyer plead his case. And you said my lawyer has said quite enough. Now. I will not have you take me home, judge. I told you I don't do well with disobedience in my court. I reckon I have you sentenced to life too, lady. Judge, that doesn't even make sense. You can't sentence me to life because you can't have what you want. Now what sense does that make? Lawyer. Judge, I plead my case. You said my client has won. You said she's free to go home. Do you really want to go back on your word? Judge, yes, I get all the women in this town, and if I can't take her home, that means she's going to jail, and that's just that. Lawyer, but judge, judge, you know what? Both of y'all are sentenced to jail. I've had quite enough. Police, lock these two up. Get them out of here. Court adjourned.